Hello, my name is John York, and today I'm going to talk to you about the origins of the sandwich. This monument of international cuisine, this culinary icon that appeals to people from 7 to 77 years old, is certainly the most popular meal on this earth. Who hasn't eaten a single sandwich in their life? Nobody. That's normal. It's found in every culture and in every different form. The sandwich is like an old friend. It accompanies us wherever we go and we never get tired of it. It was worth a special broadcast. Welcome to Food History Pills. Who invented the sandwich wasn't the Earl of Sandwich. People have almost certainly been putting food between pieces of bread for as long as bread has existed. But even the oldest documented sandwich predates the famous Earl by more than 2,000 years. The sandwich in question was made in the first century BC by a rabbi called Hillel the Elder, and the filling consisted of lamb, horseradish, and a chutney made of chopped nuts, apples, and spices marinated in wine. Variants of the Hillel sandwich are still used by Jews today to celebrate Passover. Hillel was born in Babylon, but lived in Jerusalem at the time of King Herod, Jesus, and Emperor Augustus. He was a radical religious leader and a wise man. The man who didn't invent the sandwich was John Montague, fourth Earl of Sandwich, born in 1718. According to the myth, it was a compulsive gambler who ordered meat wrapped in bread to keep one hand free to play cards. But this story is not only untrue, but also unfair. The story dates from 1765, a year when Montague was very busy as First Lord of the Admiralty. It seems much likelier that his fondness for convenience food was due to the fact that he often had to eat a rushed lunch at his desk. He did supply the name, though, because before he came along, sandwiches didn't have one. They were just called bread and meat, or bread and cheese. Furthermore, Lord Montague came from a long line of gastronomic innovators. His great-great-grandfather, Sir Edward Montague, the first Earl of Sandwich, was a keen collector of recipes. One of those recommended chocolate, snow, and salt to be shaken together. The result seems to be the first precursor of the chocolate smoothie we enjoy today. Sir Edward was also given a choice of towns to name himself after when he was offered the noble title. He picked the coastal town of Sandwich because his fleet was anchored nearby. Actually, it wasn't his first choice because he wanted to be the Earl of Portsmouth <laughs> if there hadn't been an existing Lord Portsmouth at the time, we might now all be eating cheese and tomato Portsmouth. As the British Empire expanded, so did the culinary habits of its people. The sandwich became a popular meal in the colonies from India to the Caribbean. Ingredients vary based on local produce, leading to a myriad of regional sandwich variations. The French took the concept and introduced the baguette, which led to sandwiches with different fillings like ham and butter, known today as the classic jambon bar. The sandwich arrived in North America with the early colonial settlers. Over time, diverse immigrant groups contributed their own sandwich traditions. The rise of the industrial era saw a need for quick, portable meals. Sandwiches were ideal and their popularity surged among factory workers and school children. 
The 20th century saw the rise of the PB&J sandwich, especially during the World Wars, due to the non-perishable nature of its ingredients. In Latin America, from the Mexican torta to the Argentine chori pan, sandwiches have been embraced and adapted across the continent, while in Asia, countries like Vietnam with the banh mi fuse local ingredients with colonial influences to create iconic sandwiches. Similarly, India's Vada Pav and Bombay sandwich show localized adaptations. Finally, in the Middle East, the shawarma, falafel wrapped in pitta and the doner kebab are all regional takes on the sandwich concept. In essence, while the modern sandwich owes its name to an English nobleman, the practice of sandwiching fillings between bread is an ancient global tradition. Over time, each culture has imbued it with its own unique flavors, making the sandwich a universally loved culinary marvel. There you have it, it's over. If you enjoyed the show, feel free to like it, and even better, subscribe to Food History Pills to follow the upcoming episodes. See you soon, and above all, don't forget, eating is a privilege. Enjoy it. Bye.